good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time it is. Kerbmeister Klotz, back in the garage, working on my GT40. It's a race car replica's uh, kit car. Today's video, I'll be uh, mounting the engine. Uh, I got ahead of myself. I was going to do the LS7 heads, but uh, I mounted the transaxle to the engine, put the engine in the car, and I've got uh, the placement forward and aft. We have the engine and transaxle sitting in the car just where I want them. I was uh, trying to move it as far forward as I can, trying to keep the angle on the drive axles uh, as uh, perpendicular as I can, checking to make sure that the uh, transaxle doesn't hang out the back and uh, on the front of the engine, making sure there's room on the water pump uh, pulley between there and the, and the firewall. So I've already got it all marked. I'll be hooking up the cherry picker, lifting the engine out. We'll be uh, mounting those engine mounts to the chassis. I'll put it all back together and uh, see how well it goes back, to, back in the car. Should be fun. Here's got my cherry picker holding the engine. And then you can see that yellow strap. That's a ratchet strap. And I have a level on the engine. So basically it's level right now in the car. And levels on the other side here. So you can see that. Pretty much level. And that's the same as the, the chassis is. And so this here is the motor plate. And this is the plate that, that adapts the LS7 to the gear tag uh, Porsche um, transaxle. So this plate here has an ear and it's down here. And this bolt right here goes through that, and um, that's, that's one of the motor mounts right there. So there's one on each side. And when you get it just right, it goes right in there. Almost right in there, anyway. Um, so I've played around with the fitment and you can see that I have a stack of washers in there and that's moving the engine ahead a little bit and that helps me out back here the transaxle um, I actually cut this off so by cutting off about an inch off the end of that transaxle there and by moving the um, the whole assembly, engine and transaxle, a little bit. And I do have room in the front. Hard to see. Not a lot of room, about an inch. The top pulley right here is the water pump. And this is the firewall. It's about an inch there. That's the tightest part of the clearance. I'm going to be mounting my, my uh, alternator down here, somewhere in here. And this is the, this is the motor mounts provided with the, with the kit. And um, they're just the Chevy 3-bolt. And it has an adapter plate to mount to the um, LS 4-bolt setup. Over here is going to be my air conditioning. This is the, um, the LS7 water pump. This was the outlet for the water pump right here. And basically it was just going to touch the, the firewall. It was never going to get a hose on it. So I'm going to have to weld this shut and put a uh, fitting in here. So the LS family has three different water pumps and the Corvette has the um, most compact design. 
So that's what I've got. I'm going to stick with it. This water pump is just, just sitting on there now. The whole engine is just sitting, just hanging on the cherry picker. So I thought I'd show you underneath. Being that the motor and transaxle were only supported by that, by that, um, that motor plate, I did put a bottle jack and some wood underneath it. Although right now it's just uh, it's just loose. It's not doing anything, but I have good clearance with the dry sump system. Engine's low in there, and so I like that. And I'm going to lift the uh, engine up. Okay, here we go up. out. I already made some marks. I'm going to do a little measuring and then we'll pop some holes in the chassis and uh, mount those motor rods. There's a better look at the, um, the LS7 part of the mount. ICT made this billet uh, piece. Picks up four mounting points you can't see them and this is the traditional chevy small block motor mount for 50 years and that bolts to it and it's highly adjustable um, so i've chose to move it all the way forward um, this is that motor plate i was talking about this is the the hole where the 5 8 bolt goes through that's some beef there and um, this is like a one and a half inch thick plate, one inch tab. And that was basically supporting the, car, the engine and transaxle. And then I had a, a bottle jack to, on the oil pan. It's a cast oil pan, but I had wood on it. So um, that's what it looks like on the engine. And um, these are the mounts that came with the kit. That's some nice quarter inch, um, highly adaptable. And um, it's going to go on there about like that. And I just want to make sure I got it level. And... Uh, the same on both sides. So the other one will be something like that. 
And so I'm just going to check my marks and um, make some, uh, put some center punch marks and we can start drilling. Put my motor mount up. Get it where I want it. And there's my four marks. I'll be bolting it down. Got my handy dandy uh, automatic center punch. Works good, spring loaded. Okay, got some uh, center punch action there. Let me get a drill. Okay, we'll start out with the first hole. Next drill bit. Because it's soft metal, I'll use this uh, step bit. They're pretty handy. I wouldn't use it on uh, thick steel, but it'll work good on this. Put some tape on there. some holes in there okay here we go with the install there's the motor mount pretty beefy
That's not going anywhere. Okay, both mounts are in, secured. That wiring bundle has got plenty of room. It won't get crushed. All right, I, um, I took water pump off the LS7, so there's more room. That's the first thing to hit. Since this, uh, this firewall slopes aft, and not really sure if I'll be able to drop those uh, the engine mounts into these uh, chassis mounts. So um, I'll show you what I did with the water pump. So Chevy has three different. Well, three different style water pumps for the LS family, and they're all on the height. So the, um, the Corvette gets the short water pump, and that's what I want as far as packaging it into the uh, engine bay. And it had the um, water inlet, or outlet, I should say, right there. And I had a hell of a time. I cut the old the outlet off, and I had a hell of a time getting the piece out of there. But I'll have to weld this up and then um, put another bung outlet right here going straight up vertical. So that's the plan. Let's see how it goes. Uh, putting the engine and trans into the car. I've already had the engine and, uh, and transaxle in the car three times and doing it different ways, but I never did it with the, uh, with the motor mounts. So we'll see if that works. Looking pretty good. So the passenger side, over here, dropped right in. The driver's side is a little bit off. Looking good now.
So right now, I'm trying to put the bolts in the motor plate, the shiny ring here. I've got some really long 5 8 bolts that go through this, uh, the horseshoe they call this, part of the chassis, and goes through the motor plate. So, see how that goes. side. And I can tell I need to go down. Okay, it started. So I'll show you what I've got to do. Okay, so here's that long bolt. This is what they call the horseshoe and the chassis. Spacers and the motor plate. And it's in. And um, I can turn it by hand, so um, pretty close. And as you can see, motor mounts lined up. So that's a beautiful thing. Look at the other side. And that bolt, I slid all the way in. And uh, there's how the motor mounts look. Get the light in there better. So that's, that's about it for today. It's starting to come together. I put the rocker on with tape. And the door, as you can see, is nowhere close to fitting. But that's okay. I know I've got to trim the firewall so I can move the spider so I can make room for the door to close. But that's all in the future. So that's what I got for today. Another good day in the garage. Progress was made. I had a hams to help me, so had the engine in and took it out, put it right back in again. Looks the same as it did, but I got the engine mounts in. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe if you like the, the content. If you got any questions, any comments, ideas, let me know. It's always good to hear. As always, Kerbmeister Klotz saying, keep the shiny side up and your nuts tight. <laughs>